Hey guys, welcome to Safi Mixed. In this video, I am discussing two very fundamental requirements for the wave function of a quantum mechanical particle, which ensures its probabilistic interpretation be physically valid. If these requirements are not fulfilled, the physical interpretation of the wave function becomes dubious or problematic. I have already discussed the physical interpretation of wave function in one of my videos on Schrodinger wave equation. If you are interested in further details about this point, I would suggest you to watch my video on the physical interpretation of the wave function. In this video, you will learn the concepts behind the basic requirements of the wave function. The two requirements I'm talking about are related to the continuity of wave function. That is, the wave function psi of x and t must be continuous everywhere with respect to position. And number two, the special derivative of the wave function that is partial psi of x in t divided by partial x needs also be continuous everywhere. The first requirement can be understood intuitively with no mathematical proof. Since from the probabilistic interpretation of the wave function, we know that the absolute square of the wave function gives probability density and the probability density for a particle varies continuously from point to point. Now if the wave function is discontinuous or else broken in some region of space, the prediction of the probability near the jumps would become ambiguous. For example, for a broken wave function of this form, the probability for finding the particle in the broken region is not physical. So to avoid such ambiguities, the wave function must be continuous everywhere within the region. Now let's turn our attention towards the second condition. The second condition can be proven mathematically and depending upon the nature of the potential, it may or may not stay true. To further elaborate on this conclusion, let us start by arranging the one-dimensional time-independent Schrodinger wave equation in the form d square psi divided by dx square equals 2m divided by h bar square times the difference of potential in total energy times the wave function. Since the derivative at the left of psi with respect to x is of order 2, Therefore, to study the behavior of the first derivative of the wave function at an arbitrary point, such as x is equal to a, we need to integrate equation 1 in a narrow region occupying the specified point, that is x is equal to a. Which means we need to fix the limits of integration between x is equal to a minus delta to x equals a plus delta, where delta represents an infinitesimal change in the value of position x of the particle to either side of position a. Now let's see, what do we get from the left side of equation 1 with these limits of the integral? That is integral from a minus delta to a plus delta d square psi over dx square time dx can be written as integral from a minus delta to a plus delta d by dx of d psi over dx times dx, which I can further write this as integral from a minus delta to a plus delta d of psi prime of x. And applying the integration, I can write this as psi prime of x with limits a minus delta to a plus delta, which if I substitute the limits, I can write this as psi prime a plus delta minus psi prime a minus delta. And 
I call this equation 2. Now let us find the integral of the right side of equation 1. It goes like this. I just integrate the right side. I just put the right side as integrand of the integral with limits a minus delta to a plus delta. And I can take 2m divided by h bar square out of the integral and can rewrite the integral into this form that is psi of x multiplied from the right with v of x and the total energy E. And I can split this and I can write the two terms of the integrand into two different integrals like in the form of this one integral that is 2m divided by h bar square multiplied with integral with the same limits vx times psi of x dx minus 2m divided by h bar square integral with the same limits e times psi of x dx and I call this equation 3. And comparing equation 2 and 3, we can finally put the whole stuff into this equation where I have put the result of equation 2 at the left and the result of equation 3 on the right of this equation. Now, a function is said to be continuous if the difference between its values for an infinitesimal change in the value of the variable goes to 0. From the left side of equation 4, we see that the difference of the values of psi prime vanishes as delta tends to 0. That is, limit delta tends to 0 psi prime a plus delta minus psi prime a minus delta equals 0. And equation 4 will stand true only if the right side also goes to 0 for delta tends to 0. Let us see whether the right side gives this result or not. So if we look at the second integral on the right of equation 4, the second integral is always finite and continuous. To see this, let us work it out for a specific case where E, the total energy, is independent of position. Under this condition, the setting, the second integral on the right of equation 4 can be written as 2m divided by h bar square with the same limits of integral e times psi of x dx equals 2m times e divided by h bar square integral of psi x with x that is dx. And we know from condition A that the wave function must always be continuous. Therefore, limit delta tends to 0, the integral from a minus delta to a plus delta of psi of x with respect to x must go to 0. That is, this integral equals 0. Therefore, the second term on the right of equation 4 is always 0, which means that the validity of equation 4 depends on the results of the first term on the right side. So let us talk about the first term in equation 4 and I go sequentially for different choices of the potential. First, let the potential Vx be equal to 0. This corresponds to a free particle and with this condition, the, second, the first term in equation 4 also vanishes, which means the two sides of equation 4 agree with each other leading to the continuity of psi prime x that is the derivative of the wave function with respect to position is then continuous for a, for a free particle and we can write this result as limit delta tends to zero the derivative of wave function with respect to position at position a plus delta equals the derivative of wave function with respect to position at position a minus delta. On the other hand, if the potential Vx is a constant, that is, it is independent of position, then the first term in equation 4 can be written as integral from a minus delta to a plus delta, Vx times psi x dx can be written as V naught, that is, 
potential Vx is a constant and I'm replacing the value with V0 times the integral of psi of x with respect to dx and again invoking the result of first condition the wave function should always be continuous everywhere and thus equation 4 is true for a smooth or constant potential as well that is the derivative of wave function is continuous everywhere for a constant potential now let us check the validity of equation 4 under another condition that is if the potential is infinite in a region like on either side at the boundaries of standard infinite potential well we know from the values on particle and infinite potential well that the wave function on the boundaries in such case drops to zero due to this reason the first integral on the right of equation 4 goes to zero for infinite potential in a region and hence the first derivative of a wave function is continuous however this result is not always true for every potential for example consider the potential defined by a delta function of the form v of x equals chi times delta function with argument x minus a where chi is a constant for such a potential the first integral on the right side of equation 4 becomes limit delta tends to 0 2m divided by h bar square integral with the same limits of v of x times psi of x with respect to x equals 2m times chi divided by h bar square limit delta tends to 0 integral with the same limits psi of x times delta of x minus a dx and applying the definition of delta function this result reduces to 2m chi divided by h bar square times psi of a Putting this value in equation 4 shows that the first derivative of the wave function becomes discontinuous. That is, limits delta tends to 0, psi of a plus delta minus psi of a minus delta equals 2m chi divided by h bar squared times psi of a. The bottom line is this. The special derivative of the wave function is continuous everywhere except at points where the potential is singular. In other words, the discontinuity in the derivative wave function appears at points where the potential behaves badly.